Hello, my name is Steve Olson. I'm the manager of training services for Mesa and an Autodesk certified instructor. In this video, I'd like to share some workflows that I've developed recently with a customer to how to take recap data into AutoCAD and then get some AutoCAD geometry from that. So right now I have a blank AutoCAD file here that I'm going to insert a point cloud into. So I'm going to go up to insert here on the point cloud panel and go to attach. This will allow me to browse out and find other an RCP or an RCS file from recap. So I'm going to go and grab this tech shop one right here. And at this point, it kind of looks like uh, a block insertion dialog box where it's going to say, okay, well, what's the, the file being inserted? Where do I want the insertion point to be? And the scale, I'm just going to leave it that I'm going to put it at 0, 0, 0, the scale of, uh, of 1 and 0 rotation angle. I'm just going to go ahead and say okay to that. So now you can see I've got the point cloud in here. So two things I want to do is the first is it's kind of not laying in the X, Y, and Z orientation that I was hoping. So I can rotate this so it's laying more appealing to what I want. Secondly, I can also use some cropping tools to remove some of these points that aren't uh, important to me in this, in, in this file here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just start the regular old rotation command. I'm going to select my object and now it's going to want my base point. Now one thing before I get into that, I do want to show you here in my object setting, settings. I've turned on my 3D object snap here and also turned on all of the point cloud um, object snaps. I, really the node one is all I really need but I, I just turned them all on just to kind of yeah, just be the most effective here. So now I'm going to zoom in here and you see it will connect to one of my corners of my point cloud. And now here I would like to actually use a reference angle so I can get it the way I want, so I'm actually going to use the reference command. Pick this same corner up, and just pick out another corner on this this edge, and I'll rotate that to 90 degrees. So now, if I zoom out, you can see it's running more up and down, kind of the way I was hoping to have that done. So now, if I select my point cloud again. It gives me a bunch of different tools here. I'm going to focus on the cropping tool and just use the rectangular crop. So I'm going to come right about here, just draw basically a rectangle like I would otherwise. And now it's going to say, do I want to keep the inside of that rectangle or the outside? I want to keep the inside. Okay. So the next thing I want to show you in this video is how to use the section plane to get essentially like the floor plan of this building. So what I'm going to do here is if I select this again, you'll see I have this section plane command here. And if I hit on this, you'll then say, okay, I want to go to the bottom section plane. So now you'll see I've got a section plane here that it's, it's kind of already sectioning here. Now one thing that I typically do with this is I usually typically escape right away because I want to move the, the section plane and not the point cloud, but both of them were selected. So it's typically what I found as I usually just turn, just kind of get out of it right away. Then I can select the point cloud itself, or sorry, the section plane itself, and I can control where I want that to be. So I'm going to kind of go to a right side view here. What I'm going to try to do is get uh, basically a slice of the floor. So I can kind of back this off if I want to. Down a little bit further here. Now I can bring it back up into the object here. So I'm going to come right about. Come to right about here. And then also, right now the setting is set to section type plane. I'm going to set that over to a slice. And then set my, my depth here so it's basically about two feet. So now you can see here I'm getting that slice right through there. And actually now that I think about it again, I would like to take my section plane and just move it up 
just a, a hair. So you can see here I have a offset value here that I could also use that as well to move it. So maybe I want to bring that down to maybe even zero. Let's see what that looks like. That's looking maybe even bring it up to just bring it up to one. So I'm kind of in the cloud uh, but not too deep into the cloud. So now that I have that if I select my point cloud again I get these section lines uh, commands here and this is a pretty neat command it's relatively new you can see here I can say well I want the entire cross section or just the perimeter um, do I want to go on a current layer um, or what, whatever I want to do there I typically would create a layer I, I skip that step in this point what color do I want those um, the, the, the cross section to be 2D polylines um, you know, I and one of the things I've learned using this command is you don't get the best results leaving the slider all the way to the fastest. So I usually bring it to here somewhere between 10 to 25 percent. I get a little bit better results. I've also messed with the minimum line length. That's probably going to be dependent upon each of your of your models. Maybe I'll just set mine to one. I I've I found better success setting it down, but the further down you set it and the more points you uh, bring in you might get a lot of extra data you don't want so kind of moving down just uh, I'm just going to keep the other options here and say create it'll take a few seconds um, to, to calculate this I've actually on a few occasions I put the slider all the way up to the top and it's taken 20 minutes to, to, to gather all the points so I found that that about that 10 to 25 percent it takes somewhere about a minute to two minutes which is probably pretty pretty close to what what you're looking for okay now I paused it while it was calculating now it is done here you can see that it's now saying do I want to accept these I'll go ahead and say accept let's see what I got off of this here real quick if I zoom in you can see some of those green lines if I go to my point cloud manager I can just turn off the point cloud altogether and we can see what I've got so a lot of data there uh, maybe I included maybe too many points um, there's a lot of equipment in this so it's, it's you kind of the type of thing that you kind of have to work with and see you know, what settings do you find best but I've, I've found for floor plans and stuff like that you're best to be like either right on or just into the point cloud a little bit doing the slice kind of helps it uh, minimize the points it's trying to calculate with and you get uh, some some pretty nice results here uh, so a couple of things I'm going to do real quick just to kind of put this back to, to to the state that I want. So I'm going to turn my point cloud back on. You can see here that it's, I've, I'm only getting the slice of that. So if I select my section plane, I can use this live section command to turn off or on if it's actually sectioning that. So I'll turn that back off. So one other thing I'll show you here, that uh, some commands that do that, that are here to extract information off is the edge and corner commands with edge you kind of pick uh, these planes that it sees in the file or in the point cloud and it'll extract edges and if I zoom in you can see there's an edge there there's also the corner where I can pick again the same types of planes and I can get a point there as well so if I turn my point cloud off you'll see there I got an edge and a point there that works out decently. Sometimes it's kind of hard to get the right plane to be picked. Uh, in this situation, this is a fairly large file. It would have taken me a lot of time to get all the right planes and edges and so on and so forth. So I, I do find the section command to be a little bit more, uh, a little bit better option there. But uh, there are there is some some benefits to the edge and corner commands. I want to thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to reach out to me at my email address on the screen. And again, 